Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special session on the mining and mineral sector in partnership with the Trade Commissioner Services of Canada. India is transitioning from a coal thermal based economy to a cleaner India with renewable energy sources replacing traditional sources. We have an esteemed panel here today to deliberate on non-fuel mineral exploration in India and opportunities for Canadian mining stakeholders. It would be really interesting to learn what are the new scope of opportunities for Canadian stakeholders considering the multiple policy developments in India. Among our panelists here today, we have Mr. Ishtiak Ahmed, advisor Niti Ayok on behalf of Dr. V.K. Saraswat, Mr. Biplop Chatterjee, CEO and Director Consulting, GeoVail Services, Dr. Rajesh Chadda, Program Director, Energy, Natural Resources and Sustainability Center for Social and Economic Progress, CSEP, and Mr. Praveen Sharma, Vice President Mines, Hindustan Zinc Limited. Moderating this important panel ses uh, session is Mr. Shaibal Ghosh, Trade Commissioner, Extractive Industries, High Commission of Canada, New Delhi. Shaibal has been helping Canadian exporters of mining equipment, service and technology providers, and mining exploration companies to do business in the Indian market and Project Canada as an attractive destination for potential Indian investors from this sector. <clears throat> Before I request Shaibal to take over, I would like to welcome Mr. Pradeep Singh, Director Technical Ministry of Mines, Government of India, for his special address. Mr. Singh has an enriching background as an expert in the expert appraisal group constituted by Central Electricity Authority, engaged in geological and geotechnical appraisal of the mega hydro projects of India, Nepal, and Bhutan and funding regional and detailed mineral exploration. He has also authored more than 47 unpublished geotechnical reports of GSI, mainly pertaining to engineering geology. Mr. Singh, welcome here this evening, and may I request you for your address. Over to you, Mr. Singh. <clears throat> yeah, good, uh, good evening, all the distinguished uh, speakers participants from India, and good morning, all participants from Canada. So just a minute, I, it will take uh, a minute to just share my slide. Okay, now I am good to go. Uh, I will confine my presentation to, uh, as uh, we, we know that uh, uh, major reforms were initiated and uh, uh, the Mother Act for Mineral and Mining Sector is the uh, MMDR Act. Uh, uh, and the major reforms were initiated. Amendment was made in 2015. So I would uh, confine my presentation to uh, where we have reached so far till 2015 and uh, what we are going to achieve now because the central government is in the process of again uh, uh, because of the the learning curve which we have undergone in past four to five years, so we are in the process of uh, initiate. We have already initiated uh, one major reform, and it is in the process of finalizing that reform. So, uh, in 2015, uh, after the amendment of MMDR Act, which is the Mother Act for all the uh, mineral and mining sector in India and which is basically administered by Ministry of Mines, Government of India. The auction regime was introduced uh, and uh, we have, uh, after that, uh, uh, it was decided that all uh, mining blocks will be given through the process of auction. And there, were, there are two types of auctions basically in our country existing right now. One is, uh, uh, that the blocks are given to a, in a G3 stage exploration. It is, we are in, in India, we are, we have adopted uh, UNFC classification 1997 and the auction is as per the, the rules which were framed, that is mineral evidence and mineral content rule. Uh, and we have, we follow two, two stages of uh, this classification. 
uh, either the blocks are given at G3 stage where the uh, evidence uh, of the mineral content is low in educate and then Lessie has to carry out uh, part of the exploration by himself and he has to reach up to G2 stage of exploration and then he has to again apply to for a grant of mining lease and other is the G2 stage of exploration where the evidence for existence of mineral co content is there and uh, this the block is auctioned as at G2 stage now so far uh, when this uh, uh, reforms were introduced so far 105 mineral blocks have been auctioned out of that 28 uh, uh, this is state uh, out of that 98 mineral blocks are of g2 stage and nine mineral blocks have been auctioned at g3 stage that is uh, as composite license and uh, this is the summary of the auctions if we see that because the auction regime is gradually stabilizing uh, in 2015-16 we could auction only six blocks but then uh, in 2016-17 and 17-18 uh, we could auction about 15 and 14 blocks and then it is gradually rising for the current year we have already auctioned about eight blocks so far and 10 for 10 blocks uh, the process of nit is undergoing and for 96 blocks, uh, uh, this exploration has been completed. Geological reports have been submitted to the state government by the prospecting agencies. And state government is under various stages of finalizing these blocks for auction. So we expect that uh, by uh, end of this financial year, the number of blocks which will be auctioned will be certainly be very um, much more than what was auctioned last year or previous to that. So this is the summary of the, the geological reports which have been submitted by Geological Survey of India since uh, 2015. And uh, so far 101 reports, uh, G3 stage and G2 stage reports have been submitted to state governments because uh, as we know that in our country, there are very few exploration agencies and uh, most of the exploration is carried out by uh, Geological Survey of India, which is a uh, attached office department under Ministry of Mines. And out of this 101 geological reports which have been submitted, only four blocks have been auctioned so far. And uh, till date, uh, out of the total reports submitted by Geological Survey, Survey of India to the state governments, 15 blocks have been auctioned but uh, 11 blocks pertains to the reports which are pre-2015. Whatever exploration or geological uh, investigations have been carried out post-2015, only four blocks have been auctioned so far. And likewise, another agency is there. Uh, central. It is a central government public sector unit uh, called Mineral Exploration Corporation Limited. So they have also prepared several uh, E3 stage reports and G2 stage reports, but so far none of the blocks have been auctioned, though as far as the information which have been received from uh, uh, the MECL, almost 10 blocks are in the process of uh, uh, finalization for uh, preparation of NIT. So the conclusion drawn from the blocks which have been auctioned and uh, auction process see then the the uh, after the prospecting agencies submit the report to the because uh, the auction is done by the respective state governments in our country so when the prospecting agency submits the geological report to the state government then uh, uh, this process of uh, preparation for preparing the block for auction starts and uh, set several stages that are the standard stages for uh, initiating a tender or initiating a this is are uh, undertaken by the state governments and this these are the various activities which are taken uh, undertaken by the state governments uh, once the report is submitted to the state government then uh, uh, 
this DGPS surveys starts for uh, uh, identifying the mining barriers which have to be excluded for, from the uh, mining block. Then uh, the letter is uh, sent to the district uh, magistrate, that is the administrative authority in whose jurisdiction that uh, mineral block falls so that the uh, required NOC for the land can be obtained. Then uh, preparation of pre-feasibility report is done. Value of the estimated resource is calculated and the information memorandum is prepared. Then the, this calculation of bidding, bidding parameters, finalization of NIT, et cetera, that is also done. But these stages, if they go in tandem, then it will maybe take on a, about nine to 10 months to prepare the block for auction. But many a time we find that these stages do not go in tandem and the bl blocks keep on lingering on for uh, because of one reason or the another and the states are not able to finalize the blocks for auction uh, because of several constraints. So the inference drawn from this, the my above discussion is that uh, after the geological report is submitted to the state government, considerable time is taken by the states to make the block ready for auction. So th therefore the auction process has been slow. So government is uh, uh, aware of this fact and then now we have started a process of called pre-embedded clearances. Uh, sorry, I will discuss this later. Then the inference drawn is that the auction process is slow. So now because of, the, since the auction process is slow and the government agencies were able to only provide a few uh, geological reports to the state government. So the central government has accelerated this process of submission of the reports to the state government. And uh, uh, we have made a calculation and by uh, next two financial years, we would be in a position to hand over around 732 uh, this mineral blocks uh, which state government can prepare and finalize for auction out of that uh, out of the total reports available with the state governments 61 mineral blocks uh, are already ready for auction and geological survey of india has submitted final completed reports we have submitted 50 reports out of that state governments have informed that almost 34, 35 blocks are under various stages of auction. And then uh, 48 blocks are there where state governments are themselves involved in preparation of uh, geological reports. And uh, about 50 blocks, uh, geological reports will be uh, available because of uh, uh, working and non-working working mines which expired in March, 2020 because of the amendment in two, uh, of uh, 2015. And then a uh, lot of mines are there where the, because of uh, which are under private hands, which have uh, been, the lease is being terminated because either they have completed their 50 years of life or because of some other reasons. So these 285 mineral blocks will be available because of that. Then Geological Survey of India will be submitting 100 blocks, more blocks uh, to the state governments. Out of that, 50 will be submitted by February 2021. And then another 50 will be submitted by within one month, that is by March 2021. And then uh, after this, the uh, major reform which the central government is undertaking right now, uh, about one, 153 blocks from central PSUs, they will be available. So certainly because the, we will be, as a government will be in a position to submit a lot of blocks to the state governments for finalization for auction. So uh, there will, we expect that uh, this uh, auctioning of the block will certainly be taken to next stage. Then uh, uh, as we are aware that uh, central government uh, by that amendment in 2016 has constituted a fund that is called National Mineral Exploration Trust Fund. So in, in this, this fund, uh, whatever royalty that is the taxes uh, uh, 
uh, on dispatch of uh, mineral commodity uh, or is levied by the state government uh, 2% equivalent of that tax that is levy is it it flows into this fund it is a central government fund it is a non interest bearing non lapsable fund of the central government uh, basically to fund regional and uh, detailed exploration in our country so uh, uh, in last 4 years uh, since 2015 five years when this fund was constituted uh, it has accumulated around 1 uh, 1875 crore that is equivalent to around 253 million dollars and uh, out of that we have uh, uh, approved projects 184 projects uh, uh, amounting to rupees 807 crore in our country 1 crore is about uh, 10 million so if we uh, uh, convert into this million system then it is 1 crore is about 10 million so uh, we will be discussing more about this national mineral exploration Tr trust in my subsequent slides so so out of this fund we have right now uh, approved 171 projects and this is the details of the projects which we have approved for several commodities as we see that uh, number of projects uh, are for uh, bulk minerals that is iron ore limestone manganese and bauxite whereas for uh, deep seated and concealed or vein type deposits the number of projects are less so the inferences which can be drawn from this uh, is that the capacity of undertaking mineral exploration in government sector is limited because right now no private sector is there in exploration Uh, it is basically done by uh, either geological survey of india or central psus uh, public sector units or state public sector units and then another inference is that no government entity except gsi is undertaking greenfield exploration in our country so all the greenfield exploration g4 level blocks are basically carved out by geological survey of india and none of the all the other agencies including central and state psus they basically take up blocks at advanced level of exploration from uh, state dmgs or from gsi then prospecting agencies are more interested in bulk minerals so there is a deficiency or a lack of expertise for carving out blocks for deep seated minerals so the government uh, has uh, in order to uh, mitigate all these deficiencies government has initiated that uh, uh, process of reforms and these reforms are under uh, very final stage and maybe we will be very soon all the reforms will be after due cabinet approval this will be rolled out so these are the basic the reforms are that auction of mines shall be done in a structure that increases prospecting operations by successful lessees themselves that is now government uh, this process of auction which we are doing right now in g3 and g4 stages that is g3 composite license and uh, g2 mining lease we will be now uh, putting these blocks on auction at a slightly uh, after doing all central government uh, agencies uh, central government notified agencies will select blocks and then conduct preliminary exploration wherever necessary and prepare the memorandum as prescribed by the central government so this memorandum uh, in this memorandum the level of exploration will be decided and uh, wherever we uh, the uh, the exploration agency is satisfied that now uh, this uh, confidence level is there for putting the block for auction or submitting the geological reports to the state government it will be submitted to state government for auction so again there will be two stages where the auction can be initiated by the state government one will be a uh, 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 composite license that is pl cum ml regime where once the the block is put for auction uh, with a low level of confidence and the uh, successful bidder uh, wins the bid and then he has to carry forward this exploration undertake his this exploration on his own 
m it, the exploration then then the from pl to ml it will be a seamless that is uh, once he has uh, established the mineral resources and he feels that he can submit uh, his uh, uh, the exploration results to indian bureau of mines for approval of mining plan and the mining plan is uh, approved then state government will automatically convert his pl to ml and then uh, because right now these uh, their central government uh, notifies certain agencies as uh, notified agencies uh, uh, that nea notified exploration agencies and uh, uh, no private player is there no private sector part of sector have, have so far not been notified as notified agencies by the central government so now government will create a level playing field where private sector entities uh, companies uh, engaged in exploration activity they can uh, apply to the central government for being declared as notified agencies and if they satisfy certain conditions certain they meet certain requirements parameters etc then the government will notify them as notified agencies and once they are notified as notified agencies then these private entities or private players will be at par with the government agencies like geological survey of india or mineral exploration corporation limited or any state dmg or any state psu so then these they, they will have same rights as any government agency to carry out exploration in india so uh, as i already described the unified pm pl cum ml regime will be encouraged and then government is already in the process of preparing a national mineral resource classification system for reporting of mineral resources and reserves so right now we are following a classification system then uh, we are following unfc criteria for classific uh, uh, unfc classification system 1997 so government is updating this and this classification system will compare well with other classification systems existing uh be they be that uh, the, the crisco classific template uh, uh Cris crisco compliance uh, uh, code or unfc or any other classification system followed in other countries and we are simultaneously we will prepare bridging document also so that our classification system that is the indian classification system can be suitably bridged with the uh, that is the two classification systems existing internationally recognized classification system that is unfc and crisco so uh, this is required because uh, uh, in our country indian bureau of mines maintains the national mineral inventory and national mineral inventory is updated once in every 5 year so earlier the inventory was updated in 2015 now in 2020 uh, we are the ibm is again in the process of updating the inventory because uh, all the exploration agencies carrying out exploration up to any stage they have to submit that data to indian bureau of mines in standard templates and then ibm then uh, calculates the inventory so inventory is uh, basically Uh, constitutes of all the established resources as well as reserves mr so, pradeep saying uh, we have a little bit of a uh, time constraint so sir okay, so, so i am just here uh, so i have already described about this national mineral exploration trust so this trust fund has accumulated around uh, 1500 crore of rupees and then we have calculated that uh, uh, if uh, the same trend continues of accruals that is inward remittances then this fund will grow to 4750 crores by 2024 25 so the government is also trying to update the uh, geological uh, geoscience baseline geoscience data base which is there so uh, we have already completed geological mapping of the entire country and we are we have already covered that hard rock terrain with whatever is there so we have completed it by geochemical mapping geophysical mapping and then uh, we are carrying out aero geophysical surveys uh, by gravity and magnetic surveys which will be followed up by uh, heliborn surveys electromagnetic gravity and magnetic 
so the the whole purpose is objective is to create a very robust geoscience database so that more and more exploration blocks can flow out from there so government is also in the process of uh, establishing a national geoscience data repository which will be basically uh, a, uh, a this this uh, national geoscience data where all the exploration agencies the data will be housed in this our repository in a gis uh, 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 format and then uh, we have already uh, undertaken some of the baseline geoscience activities and we are contemplating to undertake other uh, uh, very sophisticated or technical acti uh, 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 activities uh, baseline geoscience data coverage which have been undertaken in other countries like we have a collaboration with geoscience australia and uh, uh, with this collaboration we are trying to and uh, uh, we are trying to undertake two programs that is magnetic telluric surveys of the country and another is uh, deep seismic reflection surveys so that uh, we can uh, uh, basically uh, define the crustal architecture and uh, uh, we can have uh, this uh, uh, models for metallogeny models for our terrain uh, this is uh, basically the map of we have already covered we will be covering the hard rock area in 23 blocks out of that block 1 to 12 1 to 4 have been covered and rest of the blocks will be taken in second stages that is uh, green one has been covered and the blue one we are in the process of floating the nit so another uh, this project which we are again taking up in collaboration with the with the geoscience australia is the magnetotelluric survey where we have selected three transects and we will be carrying out uh, this magnetotelluric survey in the along these th three transects so the whole objective is that whatever in house capabilities are there the available with geological survey of india we will do this uh, baseline geoscience data surveys in house and other things we will be doing through outsourcing maybe through glo global tenders or uh, uh, any outsourcing capabilities present in the country so by uh, in another 4 to 5 years we will have a very robust uh, geoscience database which will be available on a uh, uh, repository which uh, and it will be free uh, it will have free access it will be free for public viewing so that is all this is thank you so much thank you thank you mr pradeep saying so uh, quickly uh, to go on to uh, the uh, the next uh, speaker mr Bip, uh, mr biplop chatterjee but just to let you know that this whole exercise is being done with the backdrop of the mining uh, strengths that uh, canada has and which basically is that you know as a producer of 60 minerals and metals with more than 200 producing mines 50 non ferrous smelters refineries and steel mills and nearly 7000 sand and gravel pits and stone quarries canada is uh, truly one of the world's leading mining nations and it is it's got major mineral production potash uranium nobium nickel aluminum cobalt uh, platinum gemstones gold iron ore tungsten sulfur diamonds so the strength of the canadian equipment and services companies actually come from the very in depth sort of experience they have in 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 in, in this uh, uh, sector and we have about over 3000 suppliers of equipment uh, mining equipment and services companies in in canada and it covers you know the canadian expertise covers all aspects of the mining sector from exploration to mine rehabilitation so it's all there uh, in in, in can uh, they are available in canada and uh, for whom this particular exercise is aimed Uh, to uh, sort of create that, uh, you know, to tell them about what possible opportunities that are there. So, uh, without further ado, Mr. Biplov Chatterjee, CEO and Director of Consulting, Geo Valley Services. Biplov has over 30 years of experience in the exploration and mining industry through careers in Rio Tinto, GSI, and Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. He has uh, been at, uh, previously the director and country head and exploration manager for the major mining company Rio Tinto Exploration in India. and he has a uh, you know has a experience of working in uh, oil exploration in the arabian sea geological mapping and mineral exploration in the himalayas 
uh, exploring for diamonds in the Kimberleys, Australia, and the Arctic in Canada, and metals uh, exploration in the Sub-Saharan uh, Africa. So um, he has a very uh, a sort of you know fair uh, uh, experience of the Canadian mining industry, having attended the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada's PDAC's annual convention in Canada for the past many years. So over to you, uh, Biplop. And of course, I know that you know you would uh, keep uh, the time aspect in mind while making the presentation. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, Chef Saiban. Absolutely. And and my task has been made very easy by uh, Mr. Singh because uh, part of which you, which I wanted to uh, cover has already been spoken uh, spoken about by Mr. Singh. But uh, good uh, good morning to you, all those uh, coming up uh, uh, coming up from. From US and good evening uh, 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 to all of you uh, in India uh, or those coming from Canada. Good morning, Gene. So yes, uh, um, uh, what I would like to speak about is uh, um, uh, how we, the, 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 the private sector uh, or the international sector, how do we look at uh, uh, look at India's non-fuel mineral, uh, mineral security requirements uh, and what could be the strategy to uh, plug the gaps and uh, uh, plug the gaps and where are the opportunities for uh, uh, mining engineering and technological services of uh, Canada? Uh, this is just a very quick uh, mapping which I would like to do. Uh, one of the one of the uh, 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 tag lines or tag words or phrase which has been given by our honourable Prime Minister uh, Mr. Modi is Atman Atman Bharat, which is uh, a self-sufficient India. Uh, um, so certainly, uh, mineral needs in the 21st century of India uh, absolutely is part of uh, um, uh, our leaders' uh, 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 vision. Uh, and so, I would be I'll be looking at covering uh, that. Uh, what are the what are India's mineral security needs in the in the 21st century? And you guys can uh, all all of you who are experienced uh, uh, in the sector, you will be able to zoom. I'm sure uh, in terms of opportunities which will be flowing through that. Uh, um, the strategy, which uh, which I believe uh, uh, is uh, uh, should be there, uh, and the op opportunities for Canadian bets. So, so let's quickly uh, flick through the slides, uh, which are there. The, uh, what are the min India's mineral needs for the 21st century? If you look at uh, this one, primarily uh, India in 2050 will be uh, the third largest economy of the world. Uh, uh, currently, it is uh, uh, it's going to grow about five, to four to five times than our current uh, uh, economy. That's uh, uh, predicted um, uh, by World Bank and many others. The, the compounded annual growth rate would be uh, the highest in the world, uh, certainly in uh, between, 20, uh, between now and 2050. Uh, India's infrastructure development, uh, it, it's being planned in a big way. India's a large country, and by 2050 will be certainly the largest, largest populated country in the world. Currently, we are about 1.38 billion. You can look at the urban development, which will be required, the, uh, the road network, which, is, which will be required. We have a very, very uh, uh, excellent road net network, but this needs to be upgraded to the kind of quality which you have in Canada, the railways, the airports, the seaports. The, uh, we are looking for inland navigation. All these would require lo lots of minerals uh, for sure. Uh, current, our current, for example, steel consumption today is at, uh, at, at our current GDP is where it is shown compared to other countries in the world. And uh, if you see in 2050, this is where it is going to rise to all, almost two to three times, uh, uh, three times than what it is being, uh, what we're consuming today. Um, copper, it's there uh, right among the, um, um, among the um, among very uh, uh, countries which consume very little. It's certainly going to grow, grow uh, significantly, the copper uh, uh, consumption, uh, when uh, our, uh, uh, our economy grows to approximately uh, 12 to 13 trillion by 2050. Uh, same thing, you can see uh, copper use. Uh, uh, so that was, uh, that was aluminum and now it is copper. Uh, so, what are the mineral needs which we which will be looking at in in the twenty first century? All those which are in black, we produce in plenty in India. Uh, we are pretty self pretty much, pretty much uh, uh, self sufficient at the moment. All those which are in green, uh, we uh, we are we have we have been short supply. But those which are in red, we don't have any supply. But these are the kind of things which we'll be looking at uh, in the twenty first century, in next uh, uh, next decade or so. We'll be looking at uh, uh, producing the, some of these commodities. Uh, so, what could be a what could be an appropriate strategy? Our uh, um, uh, mines minister has uh, sort of aspired to grow to 
to 200 percent in the next seven years. Uh, so where are we? Can it, can it achieve this goal? Where are we now in terms of uh, our uh, uh, non-fuel uh, mineral sector production? It's about 100, 100 billion dollars uh, today. Uh, um, and the metals product, corresponding metal production is about one, uh, about two hundred billion dollars. In the very large mining country, I must tell you here, we uh, produce uh, uh, approximately we 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 turn we uh, we produce approximately uh, uh, three point five billion tons of resource, including aggregates and road metals and whatnot, and these these kind of these kind of things. We have very large, and and in terms of our uh, pay dirt uh, uh, circulation, it's about or uh, 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 earth, earth moving. It's about five billion tons of uh, earth materials which we move every year. That is a significant amount of uh, uh, amount of material which we which we move every every year. But uh, uh, while we produce a lot of minerals, our ex, our imports are almost five times that in terms of the value. Uh, so this is where this this gap needs to be needs to be plugged if we want to be at Nidbar according to uh, Prime Minister Honorable Prime Minister's vision. Uh, that is uh, the obvious geological potential, which has been uh, uh, chalked out by Geological Survey of India, about half a million square kilometer, which has been upgraded to about a million square kilometer. Uh, for persons like me who have seen uh, every bit of India, I believe that it, it, it can be even further, it can be doubled. Uh, and I've already listed out uh, many areas which has not been, which have not been included, which has not been included, but which can be included in the obvious geological potential and mineral potential area of the country. I must tell you, India is one of the Sort of least explored countries in the world. We have we haven't really carried out modern exploration in last many 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 decades. So we are probably in terms of our exploration inputs, we haven't carried out much. I must uh, must say say that. However, India's mineral potential. Um, I would have liked to have uh, to compare it with Canada. The Canadian geology is very very similar, but Australia and India were incidentally uh, next to each other for over a billion years. And look at the geology. Uh, uh, if you just look at those who are not geologists, like, just look at the colors and compare the colors, the very, very similar kind of geology to Australia, except that Australia is twice the size of India, I must point, point that out. Uh, uh, but in terms of our uh, mineral, minerals, what we, what we know, it is probably a couple of orders less than what, we, uh, uh, what Australia has found. So uh, um, our explorability is, is certainly significantly more than both, both Australia and Canada. And I've explored in Canada, I've explored in the Arctic, I've explored in the till regions, the southern till regions of uh, 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 southern ca Canada. We don't have the kind of the, uh, the cover thickness which, uh, which Australia or Canada has. We have a very thin soil profile. This allows for far greater and better geological interpretation uh, of our mineral provinces. GSI, as Mr. Singh has pointed out, has, has been actually pioneer, has, been, has collected one of the finest uh, databases, uh, da databases, databases which you can think of in the world. 50,000 scale maps, nobody else has, has collected. Any, uh, no other country has collected. And it's a very, very good, very detailed map. And now it has embarked on collecting some fascinating uh, geophysics, geochemical, geomorphological, hyperspectral, and other data sets that, as Mr. Singh uh, pointed out. It's database portal you must visit. Uh, 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 any of you who is a geologist, it's one of the finest database portal among all, all the countries in the world. In terms of mineral potential, uh, you can absolutely go through, but I must point out the, the kind of mineral potential we have in any of these, many of these, uh, many of these areas, and it is still, we consider it unexplored and underexplored. Uh, this is about ultramafic hosted minerals. We have largest, we have one of the, we have the, the largest uh, chromite deposit in the world, but that's only one. We don't have anything else uh, other than that, that chromite. No nickel deposit, although we have, a, we have the largest chromite deposit in the world. No platinum deposit, although we have significant potential of real style deposit or any other, any other kind of platinum, uh, uh, PG kind of uh, deposits which you can think of. We have, what, we have the largest deposit of monazite deposits uh, in our beach, in our beach sands. We don't know, uh, we, we produce a lot, but we don't know how to, we don't know much about how to, do, how to go for downstream value addition. Uh, the base metal areas, we've got significant potential as you're seeing, as you're seeing, in fact, our lead zinc, we are, uh, uh, we are probably uh, uh, second largest zinc producer in the world, uh, lead zinc producer in the world. We have got pretty significant uh, uh, silver production as well, uh, or uh, silver deposit as well. Uh, copper, copper again, we have got one, but we've got much, much more potential than what is shown here. Uh, similarly, of the rare minerals, rare uh, uh, earth commodity kind of commodities, excellent potential existing in India. Uh, uh, bauxite deposit, again, a lot, lot of potential. We have only uh, 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 have 3 billion tons of deposit, but 
at least five to 10 billion tons of explosion potential target available. Fertilizer commodities, again, another significant potential existing. So in terms of strategy, India has the potential to grow the entire value uh, chain of minerals, uh, uh, of the mineral value chain, entire spectrum of the minerals value chain, uh, which in, in the upper part of the value chain, the downstream part of the value chain, we're not doing much. We, we have a significant potential and I'm very sure Canadians uh, would be interested in uh, contributing to it. Our mineral exploration, as I've already pointed out, is, is needs, needs significant technological input. In, uh, technological input. India is one of the countries which has got definitely resource potential. We have got the market. We are looking at the technology. I'm sure technological inputs will be there in all this, in the entire value, value chain. You can yourself, you guys, you, you can yourself assess how much of technology will be required for, uh, 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 for India. So that brings us to the last part of the last couple of slides. What are the opportunities for Canadian Mets uh, in India's uh, mineral India's in India's mineral sector to make India's mineral sector self-reliant? We would be absolutely dependent. Although uh, we would be absolutely dependent on international technologies. Uh, Mr. Singh has already pointed out uh, the kind of uh, baseline data collection which is going on. Uh, a significant part of it is it is done by uh, international uh, collaboration. Aerogeophysical survey. Certainly, I know uh, many Canadian companies are involved in aerogeophysical data collection. Uh, Australians are involved in uh, uh, some of the deeper uh, uh, deeper studies, and there are many more opportunities, as Mr. Singh has pointed out, uh, coming coming your way. Uh, there are government exploration programs which have been carried out by GSI, MECL, and the state governments. They are uh, uh, currently exploring in over 500 projects annually. Uh, you have an opportunity there if you engage the government uh, uh, government sector and NMET, the National Mineral Exploration Trust, is an interesting fund coming from uh, coming coming from uh, the uh, the industry. And that collects about 100 million US dollar annually to spend on baseline data collection, et cetera, as Mr. Singh pointed out. You have an opportunity there too, if you engage, uh, engage the government. But what about the private sector? Is there, a private, is there an opportunity in the pri private sector? As Mr. Singh pointed out, more than 100 uh, blocks have, been, uh, have, have, been, uh, ha have already been auctioned. Uh, there are potentially opportunities there. So however, there are about, about 500 non-fuel operating mines in India. You have brownfield exploration opportunities in some of those mines. Uh, 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 after me, I'm sure uh, Vedanta Group is going to talk. They have done some fascinating brownfield exploration, including with, uh, with the assistance of some of the, some of the international technologies, uh, which I'm aware of. They'll be talking about that. Exploration of recently auctioned uh, mineral uh, assets, which uh, Mr. Singh has pointed out, that will be required, and you will be your your assistance will be required there with your technology. Over that is plus seventy five. It, it has been I, I, I stand corrected that one hundred six mine uh, one hundred six uh, mines or deposits or occurrences have been of various uh, have been have all, already been auctioned out. These will require some of these will require exploration, and we will be looking at new exploration uh, asset ex, uh, auction strategy where there will be new opportunities coming for uh, for a Canadian mix uh, supplier. Uh, and there'll be, I, I would believe that with the, with the law changes, there'll be new blocks of many new blocks of exploration coming up, your ways, our ways, uh, uh, and uh, that, would, they, that would be available for international investments too. Thank you very much, Saibal. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, who have joined. Saibal, you got to unmute yourself. Saibal, can you unmute? Sorry, sorry, I was un uh, unmuted. So thank you, Viplob, and uh, I would I request all the, aud uh, the audience to put, please uh, use the chat box to put in your queries. There are a few questions over there already. I will now go to uh, Mr. Ishtiaq Ahmed, advisor Niti Ayog, uh, who actually is, uh, you know, at a very short notice, is uh, stepping in for Dr. V.K. Saraswat, uh, the member Niti Ayog, who had to um, uh, 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 sort of uh, got uh, called called in for a very important high level meeting in the government. So uh, over to Mr. S Mr. Ishtayak Ahmed, and uh, for your presentation, and uh, which primarily uh, is uh, is in title as the mining sector in India: path to the future, perspective of Niti Aayog. So a lot of stuff has already been covered, and I, we would definitely like to have the Niti Aayog's perspective in it. And if you can just keep uh, 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 this thing in mind, the timing that we. Have. The presentation. Uh, uh, thank you, you. Thank you so very much. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, as far as the mining sector in India is concerned, it has so very well comprehensively covered by Mr. Pradeep Singh, uh, who is uh, representing Ministry of Mines. He has also uh, detailed what are the possibilities and how much potential the country has. It has also been highlighted that uh, 
we are not that very well explored geology. So uh, I will share a presentation which I have prepared, uh, taking the perspective of Niti Ayo. Just give me a minute. Just. Where yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, well, your screen is coming, so if you can, uh, your your desktop is showing. Yeah, yeah, just uh, so the. I understand. I was made to understand that uh, I have a time of eight minutes to speak on. So I have kept uh, the presentation uh, so as to uh, finish it in that much of time. So, see, just uh, uh, 30 seconds on what Niti Aayog is and what was the planning commission. Uh, as most of you would be aware that uh, till 2015, uh, it was uh, a planning commission. And what planning commission used to do, it used to formulate plans, identify constants, surprise and adjust, determine the implementation machine D programs for inner area development, and most importantly, allocate uh, the resources. But uh, in 2015, there was a paradigm shift because of the changing circumstances and the evolution in the economy which has taken place in the country. And now uh, we work as a think tank, policy advocacy, which will promote uh, innovation and knowledge sharing. It's basically an outcome-based monitoring where uh, how the ministries have performed and what has been the outcome. We do also the coordination and mediation, and we also do the capacity building. So this is the structure because uh, we have uh, the guests uh, from overseas. Uh, so just for their sake, I'm just telling the structure of Niti Ayog. It's a body which is headed by the prime minister. Uh, then we have a vice chairman with the cabinet rank minister, and we have full-time members who are ministers of state rank, and Dr. V.K. Saraswat is one of the members. So uh, uh, we have ex officio members, then CEO, and the secretariat has deemed necessary. So uh, uh, as far as the mining sector is concerned, just to have an uh, overview of the mining sector of the country, we are the seventh uh, largest country in the world with a total area of around 3.3 million square kilometer. We have huge resources of iron ore, manganese, chromite, bauxite, and other minerals. But our uh, contribution of the minerals to the GDP is not that encouraging. It's hardly 2.6%. As already been mentioned, that the similar geologies have a lot more share in their GDP. We have a very, very liberalized FDI policy regime for the sector where 100% FDI without any approval is permitted. But we still are not able to attract uh, the FDI reasons are elsewhere, which I will be coming subsequently. There are a lot of uh, reforms which were undertaken in 2015, but some of the reforms have not that uh, worked very well. Uh, one was basically the transition from exploration to the mining rights. India produces a number of minerals, 95 minerals, which include uh, four fuel minerals, 10 metallic, 20 uh, non-metallic, and three atomic, and 55 minor minerals. So we have huge iron store. We have a uh, huge shortage of copper ore. We are importers. Uh, we have a surplus uh, uh, zinc lead ore. Bauxite, we are surplus. But in gold, we are one of the largest importers. So uh, our focus areas has been uh, 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 exploration, how we can explore uh, geology of the country, number of countries who have uh, upscale their uh, mineral production is because they have explored their geology, uh, be it Canada, be it Australia, be it Latin American countries, almost 100% of their geology is explored. We have not done that. And the process uh, of approvals and uh, licenses have also been challenging. And so mines have not been producing at the optimum level. There has been uh, challenges with regard to the security of the concessions. Again, how the exploration and prospecting rights can be translated into the mining right. And we have been a lot more concentrated on surface and minerals and deep seated minerals where larger value curve comes and rare earth minerals that have not been prioritized. Then we have uh, redeemed the mineral sector, which uh, 
heavily taxed sector. If you tax mineral sectors too much, what happens that the cost of the mineral goes up, cost of the downstream industry uh, goes up, and the exports also become non-competitive. There have been challenges with regard to the non-level playing field with regard to captive and non-captive mines, and also land acquisition in the country remains challenged. So, so the vision has been to uh, make the mining industry in the, the country attractive. To, by 2035, we aspire that uh, we should go into the top 30 countries when it comes to the attractiveness for the mineral uh, mining in the country, in the Fraser's rank. We want to increase our share to the GDP. We want to have our output from presently at 40 billion to 400 billion by 2035. This is the vision we have. We want to focus more on deep sea terminals. And also, we want to have partnership uh, with uh, other countries, in fact, uh, uh, with Latin American countries, Australia, any other country, or Canada, so that we can uh, have the uh, collaboration for strategic minerals. And also, we can invite investments in the country. And uh, there have been a number of reforms in the country which are being undertaken. And uh, as of now, we are trying to get into a regime where we can grant all the clearances within four months time. In fact, there was a high level committee which was constituted in Niti Aayog that has recommended that all the environmental clearances must be given in four months time. And we are aspiring to get uh, FDI up to $8 billion by 2035. And we also are aspiring to have employment of 17 million people by 2017, 2027 and 25 million by 2035. Key initiative uh, which have been taken based on the recommendations with the high level committee of Niti Aayog had done was extreme lining and simplifying the exploration permits so that it can be translated into the mining rights and uh, security of the tenure, transitioning from exploration to mining, uh, shifting focus from surfacial and uh, bulk minerals to deep seated and non bulk minerals. So uh, there has been a lot of focus on revenue maximization with the, so much of premium being quoted by the bidder. So we are now going to focus on production maximization. We are trying to fast track auctions. So transferability of clearances and approvals. In fact, there has been amendment in the act also so that the new lease holder gets the earlier clearances which is valid for two years. More and more investment in R&D is needed and focus on rare earth and strategic minerals. And so, and also entering into partnership with other countries. These are the key initiatives the government is taking. I hope uh, the policy regime of the country will become more and more attractive. It will also lead to more and more investment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, for uh, making a very, uh, very quick and nice, uh, good, uh, well covered uh, presentation. Uh, I will now invite uh, Dr. Rajesh Chadha, the Program Director uh, of uh, Energy, Natural Resources and Sustainability, Center for Social and Economic Progress, uh, to make a presentation, uh, uh, his presentation entitled, titled Analysis of Policy Framework for Mineral Exploration in India and Opportunities Thereof. Just briefly to uh, mention about Dr. Chadha. Uh, he was, uh, before this assignment, he was formerly a professor and research director at the National Council of Applied Economic Research, NCAER. Uh, he has worked extensively on regional and multilateral issues pertaining to international trade. Uh, his other areas of interest include FDI and agricultural markets. Uh, he uh, has also played a key role in the research project sponsored by the governments of India, Australia, and the UK, and various international organizations. Uh, he has been a visiting scholar at the universities of Michigan, Melbourne, and Monash, and visiting faculty at many prestigious academic and research institutes in India. He was nominated as the GTA, GTAP Research Fellow 2004 to 2007 by the Global Trade Analysis Project, Purdue University, USA. He received his doctorate in economics from the Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi. Over to Dr. Chadha. Thank you very much, Mr. Ghosh. Am I audible? And is my yes. present yes. okay? Yes. Is my presentation yes. seen uh, so that uh, I can proceed? Uh, you can just, uh, I think, make it a full page. I mean, uh, as a, yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's yeah. So first Perfect. of all, uh, good morning 
to all those who are listening from Canada, US, and good evening, India. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Andrew Smith and Mr. Saibul Ghosh and ICBC for inviting me to this important discussion that we are having. Important in the sense that, you know, as you know uh, from my background, I am an economist by training. And uh, what I have done, uh, this, the, the name that you're looking at CSEP is Center for Social and Economic Progress is uh, a renaming of our former avatar that we used to be Brookings India till one month ago. And we have uh, given a new name and it's a new entity where Dr. Rakesh Mohan has taken over, uh, the former uh, Deputy Governor RBI has taken over as the Chief of Research and uh, Distinguished Fellow. So a bit of introduction to me. And the work that I'm reporting is more than one year old now. So we have been working for last one year. And the idea is, you know, um, I, I, I understand that uh, the speakers who have spoken before me have a lot of experience in, in the mining sector, geology, and probably the ministries. My uh, newfound interest was for two reasons. That A, I found that the my mining economics in India is not uh, a subject of uh, discussion from the angles of positive economics, that is efficient mining, and normative economics, that is you know, welfare of the communities and so on and so forth. So I thought that, uh, you know, as agriculture is to food production, mining is to manufacturing. So to be talking of manufacturing in India and the uh, Atma Nirbharta will not be uh, successful unless the mining sector is successful. And there is a lot that needs to be done to make the mining sector successful. So that is the brief with which I am proceeding. And uh, also, uh, one of the speakers has already spoken on the high taxation in the mining sector. One of the puzzles that ha has been bothering me, I should put it up front so that if there is an answer with somebody, I'll be very happy. You see, high taxation, taxation apart, uh, I am not yet come to terms with uh, auction bids of 100%, both, I, both by the both by the merchant miners as well as by the you know downstream who are kept captive miners. This is a puzzle that I have been trying to think about, and uh, so I, I have put it up front first that how would they make uh, their uh, goals meet? Okay, the the first slide is obvious, and I think much of it has been discussed that India produce in India has produced minerals and non fuel minerals eighty eight and. Uh, Biplav has clarified that uh, it's not 0 0.5 million square OGP is much higher. GSI has been doing a lot of, uh, is a repository of geological data. However, there is a need to incentivize exploration of major minerals. So don't you think that last statement on this screen itself shows the weakness that the mining sector in India has been facing? I'm showing some of the major district, major states, Rajasthan for zinc, uh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh for limestone, Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, et cetera, just for uh, an overview of the states which have some major minerals. My first query is obviously that for many years, this has oft been repeated that, uh, you know, we need to do more exploration. And this sentence, quote unquote, might have been spoken 20,000 times. Why are we not doing able to do it is a big puzzle that uh, I think everybody has spoken about, but I'm putting it up front. Now, uh, since it was a Canadian uh, discussion, I thought that I should put forward two or three points on Canada-India mining cooperation. Well, when I searched the literature, I found that there is an MOU of 2010 to establish cooperation in mining and earth sciences. Canada can share state-of-the-art technology and expertise in mining sector with India. Secondly, I looked at literature and found that Canadian High Commission to India invites Coal India to seek investments for coal assets in British Columbia. And then uh, 
the PDEC conferences, uh, Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce identifies areas of interest in 2019 uh, at the PDEC. And then I also see that the Dominion Diamond India headquartered in Alberta has a set up a shared services office in Mumbai for IT support, etc. So I, I thought that uh, I would get much more material on in Indo-Canada mining cooperation. I, I could just get this, but I am sure that there must be some more. Uh, this is uh, how my uh, interaction with Canada started. Uh, I participated as a Brookings India at that time, now CSEP, in PDAC 2020 in Toronto. Uh, in, luckily came back without the virus uh, on 7th of March. I was lucky probably uh, because uh, we, while going, we didn't know that it will be so high, but while coming back, I think there were strict restrictions already coming. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy I'm back. But I, I think it gave me a good, very good opportunity to discuss about the mining in India and mining cooperation with Andrew Smith, Trade Commissioner, Ranj Pillay, who is Deputy Premier, Yukon Territory, David Williams of Global Affairs, Ben Chalmers, Mining Association of Canada. And I have been maintaining contact with them. So uh, today's meeting being India-Canada cooperation, I think I would like to take it forward. And thanks very much to Mr. Andrew Smith, who made these connections for me uh, Ranj met me uh, uh, as his chance in an ICBC meeting there. So I'm in touch with all of them. So one of the interesting things that is obvious, uh, I could lay, uh, get some 2018 data that uh, when India exports to Canada, it's just 3% of the mineral products. But when India imports from Canada, the total uh, A, you know, as a trade economist, I find abysmally low trade between India and Canada, you know, whereas the, there is a huge complementarity in many other things. But 36% of the Canadian exports to India is mineral products. So I would like to, uh, so this meeting gives me even more uh, incentive and encouragement to work on what are the India-Canada opportunities. Now look at this, uh, you know, uh, talking a lot about, you know, India having resources, but if I look at reserves, you know, you can see that nickel ore uh, out of 100%, there is zero reserve, which means we are almost not producing it. Similarly, you see the gold metal, iron ore. So what, what uh, to an economist, it, 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 it is really, really a, an important issue of low hanging fruit. And I think, by the way, the values I have given in the, in the uh, row below, you, you can see that. The, the, see, the, the, the core of the slide is that, you know, much more needs to be done to convert resources to reserves. And obviously this can be done by expert uh, explorers. And again, this sentence I have heard 20,000 times that uh, explorers are not coming to India. Again, I think we need to think why, why it is happening like this. Now look at this slide exploration companies and budgets of, uh, I have given both, you know, the blue is the number of companies involved in exploration and uh, orange is the total exploration budget. So again, India falls, you know, uh, we have, we have similarity to Australian geology. We have so, so much having been heard about. And then when I look at uh, from SNL finance that there are hardly any companies which are exploring in India. It's 2015 uh, num uh, data that I'm, and there is uh, hardly total exploration budget that is worth writing home about. Now, uh, if I go to uh, the Fraser Institute Canada's rankings, uh, I could see the rankings uh, being the lowest for investment attractiveness, sorry, policy perception, best practice mineral potential, lowest, at the lowest. However, when I see 17, 18, 19, uh, there is no mention of India at all because probably there is there some number of companies have to respond before you get into the Fraser Index category. So isn't it that uh, disheartening that after hearing so much about India's great potential, we now know that uh, we are not doing good. We are not doing good on exploration. Much more needs to be done because 
I consider like agriculture is important for food processing, mining is important for manufacturing, and I uh, I'm repeating that uh, once again. So I'll be very brief. Uh, probably this has been said in the National Mineral Policy 2019. Uh, my only view is my only uh, you know contention is that the policy should now be converted. Administration Chair Kamath mentioned that Niti Aayog is working hard to make it happen. 200% increase in major mineral production, uh, improved exploration and regulatory streamlining. So I'll, I'll, be great, I'll, I'll be really glad because I did participate with Mr. Ishtiaq Ahmed in the Niti Aayog meetings and have already given my uh, viewpoints, single window clearance, unified authority at the national level yet to happen and environmental responsiveness that is sharing the DMF local community with the local communities, district mineral funds that are being charged. You know, one of the issues I might highlight at the, uh, towards the end, you know, uh, uh, others have spoken about it, but I have written a piece which is uploaded on the CSEP website. I can share with anybody who is interested. You know, critical minerals are going to be, and Biplav has already spoken about it, the lifeline for the next generation manufacturing processes. So economic importance of the supply side risks are complex global supply chains. China produces 80% of the world output of the rare earths, more than 70% cobalt, Congo. Australia produces 55% of the lithium with China as its major importer. So one can see that uh, Brazil for niobium 98%, which means that the other countries have to set their house right. And uh, here, when I say skewed critical material supply chains, uh, rare earth elements between US and China, there are trade issues, lithium between Australia and China, cobalt between Congo and China, nickel exports banned by Indonesia continues, China-India trade under shade. So there are very difficult times for the critical material. So whereas other minerals are being talked about, I thought that I should put up front that uh, when I look at the minerals produced in Canada, uh, there's a lot to do with gold, coal, coal, potash, iron ore, copper, but the battery minerals, which are important for India's renewable energy, electric vehicles, cobalt, graphite, lithium, and nickel, also in Canada is doing extremely well. And then I put the critical mineral inventory of India. You know, we, we are very, uh, we, 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 I've been seeing inventories being shown, resources being shown, but sorry on the reserves, sorry on the exploration, sorry on the real production. So there is some alignment with Canada if I see. Cobalt, Jharkhand, Nagaland, or Odisha have resources I have identified, uh, if not reserves. Molybdenum, nickel, titanium. So there are states where uh, we can sit together, identify the areas uh, of uh, exploration needs which Canada ex is ex uh, has expertise in. Mining reforms, I will not discuss much in detail because it has already been said and that pre-embedded clearances are, uh, shall be given, Mr. Ishtiaq Ahmed has said. And uh, one of the issues is the distinction between captive and non-captive mines. My, my, my question is to both. How can, despite high level of taxation of 60%, the uh, miners can afford 100% auction bid? It means giving out more than what the value of the reserve is. Mm, these are some other, you know, one, 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 one other thing that I see is Kabil, Khanij Bidesh India Limited. But uh, I think uh, we need to see action happening in, in that case. And investment is needed for uh, renewable energy, lithium batteries, solar charging, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, the, the good news that I want to give to everyone that uh, we at CSCP, we have started a sustainable mining attractiveness index. And uh, I have completed yesterday with two of my colleagues, Ganesh Shivamani and Ishita Kapoor, uh, a study on uh, 24 districts of Jharkhand. And we have identified the uh, C sustainable mining attractiveness index, which in includes five major pillars which in, including mining uh, potential and the performance, infrastructure, socio-economy, environment. So on the basis of that, we have ranked and soon the study would be made public. 
that how are 24 different districts of Jharkhand performing under different pillars and overall. And the, we, we are going to do it for soon for uh, Odisha. And uh, so it's not similar to Fraser because Fraser does with mining companies. What we are doing is the real data uh, on various pillars that I have mentioned. And uh, the mining vision that I and my colleagues see is a globally competitive self-reliant India and uh, environment sustainability, as well as you know, creating value for the country, uh, manufacturing sector in particular. That is what Atmanirvata will be about while ensuring environmental sustainability and welfare of the affected communities. Thank you very much. I think I've taken nine minutes, but thank you very much. I stop here. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Chanda. I mean, in fact, it does uh, touch upon those uh, very raw nerves as such of the sector, uh, especially in the exploration sector, uh, particularly to do with these minerals. And this is what that you know we have also been sort of you know try working together with industry and trying to project uh, uh, with the with the authorities, with the ministry, with the government, with the, the decision makers. You know how to uh, make exploration more more and more attractive. For company from for junior mining exploration companies from Canada from Australia to come over, so discussions are going on. The government does now understand that this is a very important element. How to get private companies into the exploration scenario? Uh, I will now uh, quickly hand over uh, to, uh, to, uh, to two gentlemen who would be uh, uh, speaking, and they are both from Hindustan Zinc Limited. So uh, we have uh, Mr. Praveen Sharma, Vice President Mines. Uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited, and uh, along with him, it will be Mr. Kuldeep Singh Solanki, Director Exploration of Hindustan Zinc Limited. Uh, well, just to briefly talk about Mr. Sharma, he is the currently Vice President and Head Technical uh, of uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited, which is actually a part of uh, Vedanta Group of companies, and um, uh, he has uh, 27 years of working experience with uh, Hindustan Zinc. Uh, and uh, he has worked in Zambia, in uh, in, in in Australia, and uh, and also uh, yeah, primarily in various uh, in various capacities uh, in mines over there. And uh, as the vice president mining of the Vedanta Group, uh, his, uh, his his expertise encompass uh, all minerals like lead, zinc, silver, copper, go uh, and gold exploration, and of course the, the mining. And uh, so, um, uh, with this, I, uh, I would like to hand over to uh, the, the, the the screen over to Mr. Praveen Sharma and Mr. Kuldeep Singh Solanki to basically focus on what Hindustan Zinc is doing in this area as one of the largest one of the largest man manufacturer of zinc, uh, producers of zinc. And incidentally, as far as Canadian companies and equipment and service providers are concerned. Uh, the majority of them, whichever of the numbers are here in this country, the majority of them are actually uh, uh, have worked for Hindustan Zinc for the past uh, three decades or so. And so over to, uh, 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 to Mr. Praveen Sharma and Mr. Kuldeep Singh. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Saibal. Dear colleagues, panelists, and my friends, good morning, good evening. Now I'm going to take you the journey of Hindustan Zinc Mining and Exploration and the opportunities for us in the area of mining as well as in exploration. So before I start, I would like to share what is Hindustan Zinc? Hindustan Zinc in India is a pioneer in terms of uh, the mining. The mining started almost 70 years back, somewhere 1944. We started mining at Jawar, Jawar group of mines there. And then subsequently, we added in the Kiti, Rajpura Dariba mine, then Sindesar mine, Agucha mine, and Kayar mine. So this moment, Hindustan Zing is having eight operating mechanized underground mining operations, primarily uh, lead, zinc, and silver operation. This moment, we are producing around 15 million ton of ore from underground operation, which is equivalent to plus 1 million ton of Fine metal. We are pioneer in terms of uh, adopting various technologies. Currently, we are operating the biggest fleet in terms of mechanization, 21 ton loader and a 65 ton truck in underground. And 
couple of minds particularly sk as well as rampur azucha are on digital platform so what i would like to say that uh, in india we also put uh, the largest pestfield uh, plant with the help of uh, the boulder associates definitely uh, the consultant from the canada and which is uh, helping us in terms of faster ramp up and safer mining in hindustan region so as a part of ancient mining you can see that uh, with some of the evidences of the radiocarbon dating confirm that the mining took place in india more than 2000 year ago so almost uh, this moment i can say that uh, 2350 years uh, at jawar group of mine and there are strong evidences of smelting operation uh, almost 1000 years old in which uh, ancient miner were mining zinc refined zinc lead and silver as well and finally it was recognized by american society of metals and that site is now preserved as a archaeological site if i talk about hindustan zinc in india most of the operations are located in the state of rajasthan uh, currently we are having approximately 400 million ton of uh, reserve and resource and uh, i have seen uh, earlier speaker told around 20% so this moment we are about 25% and there is a strong focus to convert resource into reserve and same time add more and more and more uh, resources in the kitty so there is a huge opportunity now to converting resource into the reserve and same time adding more reserve if i go about how my underground mines looks like if you see where my crusher is there the left uh, left top is the rampur agucha underground mine we have successfully transformed this mine 3 uh, years back from big open pit to underground so there is a big bowl on the top almost 420 meter deep pit along the strike 2.5 km and across the width here it is uh, 1.2 km and it was successfully mined uh, till 2018 early 18 i would say and then leaving a 60 meter crown pillar we transited in on round mine and this moment i am happy to share that uh, rampur agucha is the largest uh, zinc producing mine in the world we produce almost uh, almost a uh, half million ton of metal from this place then we got a uh, sindesar khurd mine uh, currently producing more than 5 million ton of ore from on round operation with mechanized operation and this year we are aspiring for 6 million ton and going forward we are looking 8 million ton this is also we can say silver mine of india in addition to lead and zinc we also produce here silver jawar group of mine there are basically four mine this is a mother of hindustan zinc operation first mining was started there there are four underground operating mine all mechanized mine then recently we discovered almost 10 years back kair mine which was started and quickly we ramped up there it is a high grade satellite deposit uh, very close to the rampur agucha mine then rajpura dariba it is multi lens ore body currently producing more than 1 million ton and there is opportunity to go 2 million next year and subsequently 4 million ton so what i am trying to say by talking the production rate of these mines there is a huge opportunity from hindustan zinc operation in the area of mdo type contract bringing on equipment doing development producing so is a complete package in which we would like to grow 25 to 30 million ton so we would like to double the production from the current level our operations are world class operation uh, and we have engaged uh, engage all our partners from various part of the world in exploration this moment uh, uh, in addition to our national business partner we got tdma terra wafer uh, these are from canada mine development we got all type of uh, service provider here uh, right from uh, labor supply expert supply or mdo type contract in which peruvian sanjambian there australian also there chinese also there 
so there is also opportunity now a canadian partner to come and take control of mine development and production in race boring yes master driller from the south africa uh, they are currently operating eight uh, race bore machines so that's another area where i i, I know red path is uh, manufacturer and operator of those machines they can also uh, have collaboration with us for the future pest fill plant all the pest fill plant were designed and commissioned by golder associate canada so we got very good uh, very good professional networking with them and they are always on just on call away from us and providing the services beneficiation we are operating this moment around 20 million ton of 20 million ton of beneficiation capacity and that will also grow so all the big partners with us in oem field right from caterpillar sandvik epiroc normat all are working with us in terms of mine planning and design we got very robust mine planning system we produce life of mine plan in consultation with the amc srk and golder and then it is uh, now maintained in house we got a very competent team uh, they are managing this but time to time we get uh, services in the area of geotech hydrogeology and some uh, structure mapping or designing for particular underground so these are the area uh, we always attract uh, attract uh, uh, outsourcing component so modern mining technology as i spoken all mines are highly mechanized mine each and every activity is controlled with the help of software and now mines are digitized platform this moment we are able to see the tracking of each and every equipment in underground but going forward what we would like to see we would like to see the production if a truck is running how many load it done what is the fill factor what is the tire pressure now what is the fuel so after that the final stage in this area we would like to go complete digitalized mine in which the job distribution will take with the help of tablet or computers so we are progressing on that line particularly sindhesar mine as well as agucha mine next couple of year we would like to reach 100% digitalization in these area so as opportunity if you see mine development is the area where this year we are going to do almost 120 km of mechanized development almost 10 km per month which is 5 by 5 profile it is supported with the help of short kit bolt mesh and 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 all the area where it is required it is highly mechanized operation so going forward with the ramp up of the ore production 25 to 30 million the development will grow in the same so what what we are looking here almost 160 to 180 km per annum kind of development fully mechanized 5 by 5 section so that's the opportunity now in our production this year we have kept target 17.6 and we are right there and it will grow 25 to 30 million so what is our expectation as a hindustan zinc from our canadian partner rapid mine development narrow vein mining in jawar group of mining particularly there are high grade lenses of narrow mining we were talking exploring uh, exploration and this deep seated ore body is nearby brownfield as well but there are lot of narrow vein means 1 to 2 meter find which never come as a part of economical excavation exploitation as well so what we are looking here how to mine successfully and cleanly that that area we need expert because there are lot of gold mines in canada lot of narrow vein mining as well so there we can have good collaboration another area as i spoken that uh, sk and agucha we are going to do complete digitalization so there they can help how quickly we can transit from current mechanized operation to this type platform so these are the area where we are looking collaboration then another area that now uh, our philosophy is there zero discharge zero waste zero harm in that 
we don't want to store any single ton of tails on surface each and every waste we generate from our beneficiation plant will be converted into dry tailing and then mixed with the cement pump back underground as a paste or wherever there is opportunity not there in underground will will store on the surface as a dry case so these are the area where we are looking collaboration now i request uh, my my colleague mr kuldeep singh solanki to take uh, through the exploration part kuldeep over to you please thank you sir uh, in terms of exploration uh, the, the technologies which we are using in hindustan zinc limited uh, are uh, mentioned here uh, we are using uh, mdd motorized directional drilling where we are doing uh, one one plus six holes from the mother hole then we are using automated uh, core cutting machines uh, which has improved our productivity of uh, core cutting uh, core cutting significantly and uh, second is uh, the, the next thing is about how uh, the orientation of the drill holes uh, and uh, marking of the uh, marking of the uh, that uh, the direction of the hole in which the the, uh, the core comes out in the direction uh, we we get the direction of the holes core and then we are integrating all the data into one platform and if they, then we are doing the precise targeting of our nest uh, our exploration targets so these are the technologies which we are using right now and uh, the next part the next slide is about the technologies which we we, we are looking forward to have a collaboration with our canadian counterparts next slide. so in the next slide uh, it is about sir next slide please okay so the, these are the uh, these are the technologies in which we are looking forward to have uh, the, the, the the investors or the the, the technology uh, partners to come with us it is about having a retractable core barrel uh, which uh, where, because when we do the drilling we have a while changing of the bit we have to uh, we have to uh, pull out all the drill rods and then do the bit change and then pull put the rods again so this is where we, we it will significantly improve our drilling pro, explosion drilling productivity then we are looking forward with that uh, with a uh, putting a core uh, core library uh, a digital core library where we'll be scanning all the cores and putting them together in a digital format where we can uh, we use the data directly in terms of the visualizing the alteration zones analyzing the structural data and fast and having a consistent geological data collection for our future use and next part is about optimization of exploration drilling because exploration drilling is the most expensive piece of component in the exploration budget so if we can optimize our exploration drilling it is it's going to significantly save on the cost and time as well we are uh, so th we are already engaging our um, uh, canadian counterpart uh, objectivity in in this regards where we are going to use the drx uh, for optimization of of our drilling then there is an high tech high uh, high tech dam, high dimensional data analytical tool which will be, which will be using multi dimensional data uh, data together and we are going to predict our exploration targets where wherein we are going to uh, where we have to drill and we have to find precisely how we are going to move forward with getting the right exploration target next uh, this is the growth of our exploration uh, journey so far uh, we have moved from 71 kilometers to almost 170 kilometers uh, in 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 5 years in surface exploration and from 113 uh, kilometer to 290 kilometers Uh, in ex underground exploration drilling so this is what well, this is our journey and in this regards what we have done so far is that uh, we have uh, moved uh, we have taken the support from exploration on 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 exploration drilling but of course the the uh, with the maturing of the brownfields we need to have more and more geophysical uh, we are using geophysical technologies to access the uh, to access our uh, mineralization at depth so we are looking at depth we are looking in the strike extension and in this uh, in this we need support from support in terms of getting an end to end exploration partner who can come to come with us join hands together and give us more more input on our exploration uh, on our exploration uh, 
uh, explosion front so that to add more and more resources and upgrade the resources as well. In terms of uh, uh, technology and exploration, uh, we are looking forward with uh, 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 AI technologies uh, to get more and more uh, input. Uh, we are going to be looking forward for a 3D, 3D seismic uh, uh, exploration uh, methodology, wherein uh, till now uh, seismic was used for oil exploration only, but as it is being used uh, in uh, metal exploration as well, so we are planning to have going forward with having a 3D seismic uh, technologies to, to scan, uh, scan deep and, and identify the structures wherein we can get we can identify this, uh, the domains for uh, domains of mineralization and hit the targets. So this is what uh, these are the list of uh, drill rigs available with us. But we are looking forward with having more and more drill rigs uh, in terms of uh, uh, so so that we can uh, expand our exploration budget. Uh, we are using mobile carrier rig in underground, which is uh, which is a high tech uh, AP rock drill uh, drill, and we are having this fleet close to ten in numbers. So this is a, a this is a uh, this is a uh, this this rig has given us a very good upfront jump. We can see in underground exploration from from where we have gone from 113 to 290 kilometers of exploration. So these are the drill rigs which we are using at in Indusan Zinc Limited. So this is the complete scenario of in the exploration in Indusan Zinc Limited. Our vision is to go forward in ex surface exploration to 200 kilometers and in underground exploration to go to 400 kilometers in exploration drilling. And in exploration drilling, it doesn't go only to the exploration drilling because exploration drilling brings in a huge component of post drilling activity as well, wherein you have to go forward with the logging of the whole drill data. We have to go forward with analyzing of the core. Then we have to do go forward with the resource modeling, then converting that resource model to mine design and giving the, giving the, the reserves. So this is the complete value chain of exploration which we are looking forward, and the, our Canadian counterparts can support us in all uh, in complete value chain or any of one of the aspect where they have the expertise to take it forward. So this is what uh, the complete exploration Hindustan Zinc is op open for. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Praveen Sharma and Mr. Kuldeep Singh Solanki, because this is uh, definitely has been a, a, a very educative, you know, presentation and which is of direct benefit to the Canadian uh, METS um, uh, sector uh, participants in this webinar. So uh, we are actually we have gone uh, quite uh, sort of you know uh, um, past the maybe the normal time skill, uh, skill that we had, but. Uh, there are uh, just a, a couple of questions that we might sort of take from the chat uh, list that has come up. So uh, one, of course, is that you know that India has a huge appetite for gold and copper. Uh, how much of the potential is explored, and what does the future look like for mining potential? So maybe Biblob, uh, would you like to uh, have a comment something quickly on this in terms of the uh, mining for gold and copper in India? Come back again, uh, uh, Saibal. I just missed a little bit of your uh, question, please. Uh, yeah, uh, this is that. Uh, uh, what is the potential? How much? Because India has got a huge appetite for gold and copper. How much of the potential is explored, and what does the future look like for gold and copper uh, mining uh, potential in India? So, anything specifically to do those two minerals? Frankly, uh, frankly, both in gold and copper. Uh, if you compare uh, India's geology, it will be very similar to, uh, let's say, uh, Western Australia. Uh, Western Australia is one of the largest gold producer, coal, uh, uh, just string to gold, gold to start with. Uh, Western Australia is one of the largest gold producers in the world, and we produce only one and a half tons of gold annually, uh, whereas Western Australia is of the order of a, few, a couple of hundred tons annually. So look at the so while the geology is very similar, the explorability is very similar. Explorability is even higher. The potential is fantastic in India, but we haven't explored. So gold is one of the areas where we absolutely need a lot of technology, uh, technological inputs in as far as exploration is concerned. Copper, we haven't even looked at that at all. Very, very. I mean, to take you take an illustration, Malanchka uh, uh, is a style of deposit which is un a unique style of deposit. It's a large deposit. But we haven't found a second Malanchkan. Even, uh, even, even next door to Malanchkan, we haven't explored. 
Similarly, uh, and, and Kuldeep is nodding and Kuldeep knows it very well because he's sitting in the basement, uh, base, basement uh, hub of the, of the area. The, our, uh, uh, again, the Ravali belt or the Proterozoic, uh, Proterozoic belt where most of the, uh, 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 most, of, most of the copper you would expect, uh, a lot of copper you would expect, uh, hasn't been explored at, at all as far as copper is concerned. Very, very primitive. Himalaya, I mean, if you look at, for example, uh, the entire uh, uh, Alpine Himalayan chain, look at how much uh, copper exists in Turkey and Iran, in Pakistan and Rikotik. On the other side, if you look at, uh, look at you have copper in uh, Myanmar, in Indonesia, in Papua New Guinea. The only gap in the entire copper explosion scenario is the Himalaya. Uh, God cannot be it's so unkind to India uh, that it hasn't given us any, any copper, whereas it has given copper to everybody else. So if, if this makes any sense, uh, Saibal, uh, ex excellent exploration potential we need to explore. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, just uh, one for Dr. Chadha when uh, this one, the last one, the last question that we will take up is that, you know, the mining industry in India is facing a problem getting the environmental clearances and consent from the local community. Although in recent years, mines have given money uh, to the district mineral fund. In many states, they are not spent on time. Uh, this creates a mistrust between the local communities and the mines. Unless we address the problem, mining India would be difficult in the future. What would be your suggestions on this? So, uh, primarily, of course, a comment and maybe a little bit short uh, suggestion. Of course, I mean, you don't want, doesn't have a, a key to for this, uh, for a solution, but a uh, complete solution, but your views, please. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there are some implicit uh, views in my presentation itself, that when we are talking of sustainable mining, uh, sustainable mining includes both the efficiency for the miners and justice for the local communities and, uh, and, and the environmental issues. So uh, I, I, I have a full presentation on it separately and a webinar is already registered, uh, you know, that, that we held on clearances. And uh, the, the hope that we are given by Niti Aayog and, uh, you know, others is that when national mineral policy would be implemented, clearances would become much easier than the time the time consuming task it is but uh, the second point is also very important and uh, that uh, for mining to be sustainable it has to be kind to the local communities who should also gain from and and uh, last point you know district mineral foundation funds have been discussed a lot but when i start looking at the dmg websites there is hardly any uh, display of what has been done with the District Mineral Foundation funds and very difficult to uh, get data on it. So we should, if as I, as I said, that we are already overcharging in the sense that with 60% taxation and 100% auction being paid, uh, if DMF is being paid, it should be used to the best of the local communities. I think that's my, that's my brief comments on this question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, looking at the time out here in uh, in India, I mean, so it's uh, uh, nearing 10, I guess. So uh, I, I would uh, like to thank uh, each and every participant over here for the wonderful presentations that they've made and touching upon the various aspects of uh, the non-fuel minerals primarily. Uh, of course, a uh, big thank you to, um, uh, to Mr. Pradeep Singh and uh, Mr. Ishtiak Ahmed for providing that policy uh, uh, sort of, you know, statements as such. And uh, of course, to others, and including uh, Hindustan Zing for making a very, very, a very, very uh, wonderful presentation and Diplop, uh, of course, with his usual uh, sort of, you know, um, uh, capabilities to touch upon each and every aspect where there is a potential. So, and I'd like to thank everybody, I'd like to thank uh, Nadira, uh, of ICBC who have actually, uh, you know, we worked with together to, uh, to do this uh, thing. Uh, and we have, and I had many qu more questions with me and uh, there are a few more questions on the chat box, but I guess we will uh, definitely take it up offline and in the sense, you know, uh, by through e emails, uh, we will, we will uh, definitely, we will take this forward. So thank you so much, uh, everybody for this uh, maiden, uh, um, uh, you know, webinar on mining. 
specially focused on exploration and that to exploration of non oil minerals which is the strength which is the strength of the canadian mining sector and we hope more uh, sort of tie ups to happen uh, future past post this uh, effort thank you so much and i'm thanks very much to all of you. thank you shabal thank you for everything thank you, thank you thank everyone everybody. stay Good home night. stay safe thank uh, you so much and have thank a nice you. day thank to you. connect canada yes yeah thank you Bye. thank you thank you so Bye. much Bye. 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 Bye.